Hey everybody, um, it's been a while since I made any videos, let alone a, a math video, so I figured I'd do a real easy thing. Um, first let me excuse my uh, poor handwriting, but uh, today we're going to talk about mathematical induction, and um, it's used in various proofs in mathematics, it comes up all over the place, and it's a really useful tool, um, makes things a lot easier, you know how to use it. and. Um, Pretty much we're just going to dive right into it. Uh, the way I like to think about it is it's like going up a set of steps. Um, if you, can, you, you essentially start at the base and you go to the first step. You climb up this first step and then um, if you can do that, you know, usually you can climb up the second step and the third step, etc. until you uh, make it to the top of the steps. So this is sort of like what we're doing in mathematical induction. Um, in, in this, there are three different steps. There's the uh, base step, base case, and that's essentially like you're on the floor saying, this is what this is, we're going to go to the first step, and we're going to base everything off of that. Then there's the induction hypothesis, which essentially is saying, now I feel like I'm going to be able to uh, go up the next steps based on what we uh, just did. Then there's the body of the proof, which, you know, is uh, going up the rest of the steps and essentially proving everything. So I'm going to do two examples today, and they might seem really weird at first, but if you, uh, get, if you get into this more, uh, if you follow this more, you'll see that it's actually really useful. So I'm going to go ahead and write the first one, and we'll see. Okay, so we have our first example here. This is a series of um, I squared, the summation of I squared is I equals 1 to N. That equals n times quantity n plus 1 times quantity 2n plus 1 all over 6. And, yeah, you can read that, hopefully. And so what we want to do, we want to verify this by mathematical induction. So remember our steps. We're going to do the first. And this is where we, uh, it's our basic case. So we take if n is equal to 1, then we have the summation from i equals 1 to 1, i squared is equal to 1 squared is equal to 1. And we also have this, which is 1 times 2 times 3 over 6, which is also equal to 1. So if you're writing this down formally, you're going to want to write everything that I'm saying as well, for the most part, um, the formal stuff, because you want to make sure this flows very well, otherwise it's just going to get messy. So if I had space here, I would write so the result is true for n equals 1, and this establishes our base case. So that's, that's if you're writing a formal proof. But as you can see here, they're both equal to 1, so yay, we're at the first step. So the second step, if you recall, um, we're going to assume the result true for some fixed k greater than or equal to 1. Which, you know, means, oh, if I can get up the first step, then I should, we're going to assume that I can get up the rest of the steps. So, if you're writing this formally, we would say, in other words, summation i equals 1 to k, i squared is equal to k times quantity k plus 1 is quantity 2k plus 1 over 6. This is our induction hypothesis. And yeah, it's kind of obvious, but that's just the way we write things up. So the next step, if you recall, we're going to want to go to, we're going to start actually walking up our steps to prove that we can go up the steps. So if you will allow me to erase these. What we're going to do now is we're going to start with the, the summation of i equals 1 of i squared to the k plus 1. So what we want to do now is we want to take on both sides. We want to write, we want to be able to write our, um, we, we, we want to be able to write this and this in a similar way where we're adding an extra term to this to make it look like that. So that might sound a little confusing, but let me just show you. So if we, if we do this out, we can substitute k plus 1 into every place where we have an n. Plus 1. 
Excuse my messy handwriting. So this can be rewritten if we do it all out. K plus 1, which is kind of obvious, K plus 2 times what? 4K plus 3, I believe. Two, yeah, 2K plus 3, excuse me. All over 6. So that's one thing. Um, yeah, okay, it's all on the, all on the camera, just making sure. So now let's go let's go back and revisit this. So we can also say that summation of k plus one i equals one i squared is equal to the summation i equals one to k of i squared i squared plus <coughs> k plus one squared. See, so we're just adding the term. So we're doing k plus 1 and put it in there, squared. So we're just adding that extra term. So let's rewrite this. And so we have, oops, marker not working. So we have k times k plus 1 to k plus 1 for 6 plus k plus 1 squared. Now, we want to make this go like this. So let's uh, put these two together. So we have k, k plus 1, 2k plus 1, plus 6, k plus 1 squared over 6. OK, so we just made the, de the denominators the same. Now we're going to mush these together. Very, uh, very formal terms here. We can, if we do all this out, we can rewrite this as k plus 1 times k plus 2 times 2k plus 3 over 6. Which, if you see this and this, are indeed the same thing. So we would uh, write this down formally. Consequently, the result is true for all n greater than or equal to 1 by the principle of mathematical induction. So that's the extent of example 1. I hope that helped. Now we'll do a different example with Fibonacci numbers. Okay, so unfortunately I couldn't find uh, my example that I thought I had uh, in one of my notebooks. It was a good recursive uh, example of the Fibonacci numbers. Um, the other ones I had weren't really very good at illustrating it, and they weren't using Fibonacci, which I really wanted to use Fibonacci. So what I'm going to do is just a completely different one. Um, it's not recursive, but this is also a nice proof. So um, yeah, let's just go ahead and get into it. Pretty much we want to prove that 3 to the n is less than n factorial for all n when n is greater than or equal to 7. Okay, so. Let's start with our steps. One, we uh, just say if n is equal to 7, then this means 3 to the 7 is equal to what? 2, 1, 8, 7. And 7 factorial is equal to 5, 0, 4, 0. So, this is our base case because 3 to the 7 is less than 7 factorial. So, now we assume the result true. So 2, just assume result true for some n equal to k, which me that is uh, we say that 3 to the k is less than k factorial um, for all k. Um, <clears throat> and k is also greater than or equal to 7. So now we, so this is our induction step. 
or our hypothesis. So now we do the, the, the last step. So for n equal to k plus 1, we're starting to walk up all the steps, we have this. So 3 to the k plus 1. Now let's write that in a different way. It's equal to, oh, okay. Well, first, let's just say this. 3 to the k plus 1 is equal to k plus, or less than, well, k plus 1 factorial. So let's write this in a different way. So that's the same as 3 to the k times 3, which by the inductive hypothesis, we know this is less than k factorial times 3, because 3 to the k is less than 3. And then again, this part we know is going to be less than um, k plus 1, so then we have k factorial times 3 is less than k times k plus 1. And then factorial. And then we can easily write that as k plus 1 factorial. And so it follows uh, by the, the principle of mathematical induction that 3 to the n is less than n factorial for all n greater than or equal to 7. Uh, again, I apologize for my terrible writing. I hope this makes some sense. I'm not a math teacher. I just, I just really enjoy this stuff. So, um, maybe I'll do some more math videos. We'll see. Thanks, guys and gals.